Well, welcome everyone. Uh, I think we have uh, registrations from around the globe uh, coming from, I think, more than 65 countries at last count. Uh, and, you know, certainly in terms of the progress, uh, it's been great uh, to see so many Express add-ons in our marketplace, to see the number of partners that are taking advantage of Express on their own platforms, um, and certainly not least of all the new plugins uh, built on CP, on UXP, on C++. So in terms of what we're going to cover, you know, today on day one, you're going to learn everything you need to get started uh, building with and, and how to be successful with Express. And then tomorrow on day two, we're going to turn our attention to um, Creative Cloud. Uh, and you can go ahead and advance the slide. So, you know, where we are right now, I mean, uh, we're almost at 100 add-ons on our marketplace. We've got uh, over 40 new partners who are breading Express experiences on their surfaces. And you know, we'll talk a lot about um, new plugins and extensions for our desktop apps. So maybe just to take a step back, you know, what does our team do uh, in terms of how we think about product extensibility? And you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, when we think about you know, what we're building for the Creative Cloud Developer Platform, you know, we really have three pillars. And we think about those both from the developer experience standpoint, but also the end user experience. The first is um, we're extending the value of Adobe's web applications uh, with add-ons. Now that starts with Express, where developers can add uh, new capabilities and integrations that really are extending the feature set of Express as a, as a platform. Uh, we're also embedding uh, contextually relevant and progressively exposed Adobe Express and now Adobe Firefly capabilities on partner surfaces, as well as in our uh, Adobe first-party tools. And we continue to invest, obviously, in our desktop foundations, especially with UXP plugins for desktop apps. Now, underpinning all of this is our partner ecosystem. That's all of you. Uh, and our commitment to developers with a holistic end-to-end -end developer experience and community that really enables your success. So let's go ahead and start with, uh, with Express and where we are there. So as I said, we're, we're closing in on 100 add-ons and, and growing fast. Uh, Adobe Express is really taking off uh, for, uh, for the company. We, we're seeing uh, used by a wide variety of users who are creating content with a purpose where rich, rich, rich visual communication really matters. And that includes everybody from marketers and influencers to small businesses and, and now enterprise customers. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute in terms of Express's uh, expanded focus. But Express users are looking for add-ons that help add a, a creative boost to their work or that connect them to the tools they're already using. So I wanna talk a little bit about the growing number of APIs we have, you know, where we've rolled out developer improvements, uh, uh, including our expanded marketplace, developer insights, more contextual insertion points. And I'll talk a little bit about where we've refocused um, the Adobe Fund for Design uh, to support uh, developers in their work. So the first is if you go back one slide, we have a new um, add-ons uh, marketplace. Uh, and what you can see is, you know, there's easy access now from Express Home to drive discoverability, as well as uh, much larger detail pages uh, that include uh, larger screenshots. So it's easier for developers who are building on Express to really um, explain, you know, what, what their work is all about. Uh, if you go to the next slide, we're also driving greater discoverability through search. And so um, basically add-ons now appear as part of the search results, along with um, everything from, from templates and other forms of content that Express offers. So that's a, another path to discoverability. We're also doing this in a very contextual way. And so, you know, what you see is there are these, you know, uh, discover add-ons highlights in the media panel, the elements panel, and the your stuff panel within Express. And we're adding more contextual um, placements over time. So again, you know, the idea is we don't want users to only uh, be browsing the marketplace. We want them to discover um, the add-ons that you're building at the moment where they need them within their Express workflow. And then um, we now, the other part of what we did with our, with our marketplace is we added a new uh, in-app developer experience as part of uh, add-ons on home. So uh, with, a, with a simple toggle, uh, you can switch to uh, a developer view uh, and that new experience um, offers space to, um, uh, to you know, basically do everything that you need within the application from a developer standpoint. Um, and then finally, the thing that I we want to sneak today is we're working on a new developer tool, an add-on playground, um, so you can try out different APIs 
uh, and see how they work within the Express Editor. So the idea here is, you know, we want uh, building add-ons for Adobe Express to be a best-in-class developer experience, one that's really tightly integrated to the tool itself. And you know, building a, a cloud-native uh, product for uh, for the web uh, really enables us to to take a leap forward in terms of how this works uh, for you uh, building with Express. Um, if you go on to the the next slide. Uh, also want to talk a little bit about some of the expanded API capabilities. And so, you know, I think if those who've been following along know that uh, document APIs were just the first uh, set of powerful APIs. Uh, you know, we have more in the, the hopper uh, that we've been working on, uh, you know, things like uh, accessing rich text capabilities to do text styling uh, or accessing fonts. And we have sessions coming up later today to uh, explain what we've brought to market uh, and what we have planned that expand the possibilities uh, of what you can build with Express. So I'll shift, uh, I'll shift for a minute and talk a little bit about our Adobe Express Embed SDK. Uh, this really gives uh, partners access to Express and, and Firefly powered capabilities within Express um, to integrate with their own platforms. And so you know, you can see here that, you know, we've done this with uh, major partners like Wix, but we're also drinking our own champagne and, and integrating uh, with our own applications uh, like Acrobat. You know, we're also pushing the envelope uh, in terms of working with new platforms. So we've we've created uh, uh, custom GPTs, AI assistants for chat GPT, and, and now we're working with Microsoft Copilot as well. And so the, the form of integration, uh, you know, we, we offer a lot of modularity here. So uh, developers can and partners can leverage quick actions, uh, the really atomic actions that Express offers. Uh, they can also embed the full Express mixed media editor, uh, which includes you know all the bells and whistles that you would want within Express. Um, and then we we have a new strategy around what we call modules. Uh, and so if you go to the next slide, you know really what we're doing is uh, isolating some of the capabilities that have been the most requested um, by our partner uh, by our partners. That includes things like uh, how do you uh, simply uh, generate an image from text leveraging Firefly, um, as well as, for example, how do you um, simply edit an image and isolate those, those controls. And so uh, I'd encourage you to um, check out uh, what we have uh, at the link at the bottom of the screen in terms of our interactive demo. You can see the possibilities for integrating uh, on, your, on your surface uh, and what it would look like in your application. So now I want to take a minute to talk about uh, desktop plugins and where we are. And so, you know, what I just covered is what's coming up in day one. Uh, again, our, our, our extend and embed pillars uh, for Adobe Express. But tomorrow on day two, we're really going to focus more on the Creative Cloud desktop applications. And that's where you're going to have an opportunity to get the latest updates for CEP, for UXP, and for developer tools. You'll hear from the different desktop application product teams at Adobe about their roadmap. Uh, and you'll be able to learn uh, from other developers in the community, including uh, at our roundtable discussion. So I want to spend a minute on CEP uh, and just say that you know we're excited to share that CEP 12 uh, now comes with major updates, including a Chromium update uh, and a much needed migration from OpenGL to Metal. Uh, and next steps for us are for CEP 12 to ship with all major Creative Cloud apps at max this year. Uh, now on the heels of that, we aren't planning on adding new features or major updates after CEP 12. And I want to spend a minute explaining why. Uh, CEP is dependent on technologies that Adobe doesn't control. Uh, and sustaining it in the long term is going to be super challenging. Uh, and you know, for example, uh, Google's Chromium Embedded Framework, or CEF. Now, every time we update, we find new bugs, breaking changes, and other often unexpected challenges uh, for both us and for you, our developer community. Now, knowing that, it's why we set out several years ago to create UXP, a modern extensibility platform that has several developer-specific benefits. So first, UXP lets you build more capable and powerful plugins. Uh, for example, uh, we offer support for hybrid C++ plugins that allow for computationally heavy image processing. Uh, UXP also offers an easy-to-use developer tool, UDT, and modern JavaScript throughout the stack. Uh, so we're really focused on easier access to application APIs. And then finally, UXP offers developers deeper integration into our products. Uh, take the imaging API for Photoshop. 
Um, and so, you know, we're really pushing on innovative features like web views, you know, full file system access, and now support for Spectrum web components. All of this is to say, we want the CEP to UXP transition that we've been going through to be as seamless as possible for our partner ecosystem. And our team has worked hard to really open up the, the utility of UXP and bring it to parity with CEP, along with the accompanying documentation and developer tooling that's needed. So on day two, that's really where you're gonna have a chance to learn about our desktop product updates. And it's also an opportunity for you to talk about your needs as we continue that transition to UXP across uh, more of our desktop applications. So, you know, I think three takeaways really around desktop plugins. The first is, Make sure to update your existing CEP plugins. Uh, the pre-release versions for many apps are gonna be available even before Max. Second, if you're already building for Photoshop, InDesign and Premiere Pro, which is now in private beta for UXP, um, you can go even further and start migrating CEP plugins to UXP. And then for the other desktop apps, check out the product sessions uh, on day two tomorrow and learn more about their UXP integration plans. Uh, this is also a chance for you to share your feedback directly with those product teams. And so we hope you'll you'll take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, so let me say now a few words about Adobe Firefly. So, uh, and specifically Firefly Services. So Firefly Services is actually a collection of Adobe APIs that enable generation and editing and assembly mainly targeted today at marketing automation use cases. So that includes Firefly APIs for generative AI, but it also includes Photoshop and Lightroom APIs, video and audio APIs, and services like content tagging. We're leaning into Adobe Firefly as a brand, um, but recognize that this is a full suite of APIs um, that really enables uh, workflows end to end. Again, generation, editing, and assembly. Now we announced Firefly services at Adobe Summit, uh, and right now, we're focused on enabling developers working at large enterprise organization. It's critical that we get the product and the offering right for that customer base. So at this time, there's no separate access or offering for individual developers. Now, that said, in the future, we know this represents an incredibly exciting opportunity. Uh, developers can put together automated workflows um, that let you scale a few assets into thousands of renditions. So stay tuned for more details on this front. Uh, as we build out Firefly services and really drive that success first and foremost with our enterprise uh, customer base. I also wanna to touch on what I said at the beginning around the Adobe uh, Fund for Design. We've really refocused uh, on Adobe Express add-ons and key use cases. And the areas where we are making product grants are around importing images. Uh, you know, Express users are interested in a wide variety of styles and illustrations and photos and backgrounds and icons, really anything that can enrich the expressiveness um, of their designs. They also want the ability to export designs for use in email communications, event invites, um, so we need to make sure that you know we're exporting in the right uh, formats and to the right destinations. Obviously, AI guidance is huge, right? Um, Express users are easy, eager to optimize their designs for better reach. Um, they want new ways to generate ideas, you know, scripts for videos, um, you know, or layouts for their design. So anything that we can do there from an AI perspective and really to guide them with the power of AI uh, is 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 a welcome advancement. And then accessibility, right? We've seen tremendous uptake of things that we've done around checking color contrast um, or improving readability. So, you know, anything that we can do to drive greater compliance and adherence to standard web accessibility guidelines uh, is welcome. So, you know, I, what I would say is uh, if you have ideas on these fronts, please reach out. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to apply uh, and we are we are eager to provide grants to innovative uh, developers and teams and startups uh, and companies uh, who want to integrate with Express. So what I'll end with is a few words on our open platform principles, right? We've always uh, you know, had this approach to how we think about our, our developer platform and our partner ecosystem, but I think it was about a year ago that we really decided to elucidate the principles that underpin our work. And we have four of them. Um, the first two really speak to, you know, what, what we're trying to enable from a user standpoint, right? We want to ensure user choice 
uh, you know, we, we embrace that and allow add-ons that, you know, may even overlap with some of the capabilities that we have from Adobe. I mean, you, you obviously were pushing hard on Adobe Firefly, but we also are taking a model agnostic approach. And so we welcome generative AI add-ons, um, you know, built with, you know, other, other tools, um, you know, other families and models. Um, that's, and the reason for that um, is we know we can spur greater developer innovation um, by doing that, right? There are things that we haven't thought of. And as long as we're enabling, you know, robust um, APIs and a rich set of UI surfaces, you know, we know you're going to build things um, that are ultimately going to accrue to the benefit um, of end users. Now, at the same time, right, we're trying to make sure that we balance between what we want to uh, unlock from a developer ecosystem standpoint and what we want to do to make sure that we're managing the experience the right way. And so our third principle is really is around safety, security and stability. We have that duty to protect our users. And so we architect our developer platform with those points in mind. You know, we also want to make sure that we're leveraging existing Adobe patterns um, and, and also leveraging Spectrum Web components so that we can provide good UX defaults, right? That ensures that, um, you know, basically Express uh, and other and our, and our uh, desktop applications more broadly um, and other web applications that we're building, you know, we continue to evolve the feature functionality with an open platform, but we do so in a way that ensures a delightful user experience. So we, we try to talk about these and come back to these. Um, you know, I've, I've certainly blogged about them myself, uh, as has the team. Um, and so if you're, if you're ever wondering sort of around decisions we're making, just recognize we try to make principled decisions in line with these four points. So that's where I'll end it for now. There's uh, great content coming up the rest of today around Adobe Express again. And tomorrow is, is really focused on, on Creative Cloud uh, desktop plugin.